Hi, Gloria Leibecker here with Healing You. This morning when I woke up, I was in a bit of a downward spiral. That began last night. Um, if I rewind time a little bit and acknowledge that this last couple of months have been pretty full for me. I've been passionate about creating lots of online resources for free so that people have access to them. And um, I've been collaborating with colleagues and, and reaching out to have partnership with others to provide services, establishing myself on lots of different platforms and learning tons, a lot of new learning edges for me. And at the same time, doing my best to maintain my own life's rhythm with my, myself, my husband, my children, grandchildren, my friends, my herd. There's, there's quite a full life. And getting to the point where I launched the program, it felt so wonderful. And then as I pause and I kind of assess where I'm at and where I'm going and start the process of kind of mapping that out and doing my best to communicate clearly and effectively and, and honestly with, with others that I'm in relationship with in order to have mutual understanding and, and empowerment in the world. And last night I was getting ready to, to send an email and when I went to hit send, it's like, there's no internet access, can't send this email. And my reaction to that was a little over the top. I felt white hot anger in my temples. And I felt like daggers could have been being thrown from my eyes. And I was so angry that my communication was being thwarted, that, that this, that I'd been focusing on and pouring my heart into, it, now it was stopped. And there was something in that experience of just being stopped. And it was, and I felt helpless and powerless. And it, it just lit me up. And I was a little bit, bit fit to be tied, as my dad used to say. <laughs> and um, so I wrestled with that through the night. And when I woke up this morning, I was again in a place where it's just like, oh, it just felt like life was is too much. And as I, as I slowed down my inner experience to really come into my heart, I remembered something I could do. And I'm like, yes, I could journal about it. I could actually take the time to go through a process and step into the field with support from spirit. And so it got me out of bed, it got me going, and I spent the time I needed to, to do a little unpacking, to recognize that moment in time where all of a sudden I had this trigger. And the trigger was so intense that I knew it was about something else. It seemed like it was because the internet went down, but I had an idea there was something that was ready to emerge. So as I took time to journal about it, I, um, I recognized that the predominant feelings that I was experiencing was there was the anger and frustration and overwhelm and the, the, the white hot temples. And yet a layer underneath that, there was a, a very um, heartfelt sadness and exhaustion and helplessness. And the, based on those, those emotions, what was being triggered were shadow beliefs of, of the sense of, of not being enough. Um, really fearful, uh, anxiety more around um, an outcome. And also a real sense of powerlessness. So taking time this morning to, to sit, just to sit, I, I 
didn't go to my computer, I didn't do any of my normal beginning of the day things, other than feeding my herd, of course. I sat on the couch with my journal and a cup of tea, and after I moved through that much, I just slowed down and I literally put my hand on my heart and I just drove, dove in. To, to be open to what is the life experience that's ready to be to emerge for healing. And as I sat there, I noticed so many different waves of emotion. There were tears of sadness. There was trembling. There was um, the, the memory. There was two different memories that popped up, which I found very curious as well. There was a memory of being really young in school and there's new learning. And the thought that came up is it's too fast. It's too much, it's too fast. Like I can't keep up. And then the next memory was being with um, one of my sisters outside about the same age. And my sister was angry about something and I actually got angry back. And when I got angry back, then our dad saw me, but not her, and I got in trouble. And I got told who I was, and it wasn't who I really was being in the moment. And mind you, I do not remember what my sister and I were angry about. And yet there was, for me, it was um, being seen and getting in trouble, but not really being fully seen. Um, and so, what I developed, the belief I developed about myself was that, you know, I'm, I am stupid. I am not smart enough. I can't keep up. No one hears me. I'm slow and I'm wrong. Those were quite a few things that came up out of those two experiences. And the need that wasn't met for me at that time as a child was to know that I am enough as I am. To, have, to live from that sense of abundance from my heart to feel safe and secure, and also to be empowered, to be heard, to have a voice, for my truth to be known. Um, and so as I sat with that, I could, I could move to this place of gratitude that, that the pattern was allowing this to emerge for healing. So as I, again, coming back into my heart, and allowing myself to really feel fully that moment in my youth of this innocence um, and authenticity coming up and being really um, engaged. So anger is a higher frequency because when I was younger, I was usually stuck in a lower frequency of, of shame or immobilization um, and rather mute. So to have a voice and to be speaking up and then to be caught in that moment and seen as being bad or wrong, it, it just totally shut my voice off. And so my, I recognized that the honest expression wasn't caught by my dad. He hadn't seen the full picture. There wasn't clear understanding. He only saw the surface of the experience rather than the heart of it. And and so my experience was I felt seen and known as someone I was not. And, and so what I learned was that I, I had no voice to speak up, to clarify my truth. And as I sat with that, my heart actually felt like it was burning. And my throat, it was difficult to even identify the sensations it wasn't like it was tight or restricted, but there was definitely a pain as it moved around and then it felt like it opened. And it was, it was a sense of, oh my gosh, yeah, this makes sense. No wonder the learning was difficult for me because I didn't have a voice. I had a belief that no one would hear me anyway. So I, I wouldn't speak up or ask for help. And with that realization, I had like quivers in my belly. And I'm like, no wonder learning was so difficult for me as a child. Um, with all that going on in there. So I took time to, to do the time travel empathy and going back in time and, and imagining what it could be like differently. To have a compassionate presence there with me, one there with my sister, and one there especially with my dad. So I wrote a little story about it. 
I wrote, my sister is upset. She lashes out at me and I cry out, that hurts. Dad sees us and steps in gently to reach out to both of us. And drawing us in close, he whispers, here now girls, daddy's here now. Tell me what's troubling you, it's all right. And we take turns sharing our pain and receive his soothing love. Hmm. Hugging and laughing, we skip out to play together as he watches us with eyes of love. And it was amazing to, to write that and to see that. I mean, I could, I feel um, emotion come up. It was very healing for my heart. It was healing for my sister, for my dad, for me. It, and it was the healing of love. And so my new message is, I am loved. And there is enough love for everyone. And I am enough as I am. Oh, so the power of that time travel is then from that place is that little girl, six or seven years old. I can see her. I go to school and I fearlessly speak up, asking questions to understand life lessons. And I'm asking for support when I need it. I am accomplished and I'm eager to learn more the more I learn. I love helping others learn and, I mo and model that all things are possible when, when one is grounded in love. I know I am loved wherever I am and there is more than enough love for everyone. I am satisfied and I am enough as I am. Oh, so that was like such a miracle. It was, there was a peace that defies understanding that just permeated every cell of my being. And then I took the time to go back to the, the triggering moment. Remember when the internet went out? <laughs> and again, those, it was like those same um, needs were not met. In that moment, it was a sense of lack. I was needing abundance. Um, I, and I felt um, uncertain around the outcome of what would happen and disempowered. So I really needed empowerment and safety and security and to trust in abundance. So taking time to really step into the quantum field of energy, what is the quality there that would have supported me to stay present um, rather than being compromised? What, what could have I, for me to have been able to respond in alignment with my sacred values, what quality would that have been? And after really reflecting on that, it, it, it was an understanding, the need for me to stand in that field of true understanding and resourcefulness. So I, I went back to just last night when that internet went out. And I wrote and I said, after taking the time to thoughtfully clarify the tasks and services needed as I move forward, I write an email and as I'm empowered with understanding, I resource myself by connecting deeply with spirit. And when the internet cuts off, I turn to making dinner with ease, fully trusting the timing of all of life as it unfolds. Hmm. What a different experience that is. So then I want to ground this in an authentic action. And, and part of that started this morning when I remembered that I could journal about this. And so taking time to journal my experience, to make this repair really strong, deep in the fibers of my being. And then to make this video on this life lesson that I'm learning. And um, also to take time to complete mapping out my my day-to-day -day tasks that I need to do and and month to month week to week and and even going forward into the next year to to really from my heart tune into what I'm about from that sense of there's more than enough time and energy and resources for all of us so the life lesson is again how important it is to begin with self-connection here in order to be empowered to reach out to others, to offer support to them as well. And when I need support, to be willing to reach out and, and to ask for it and 
allow my voice to be heard because it really does matter. So where are you being called to have a voice today for yourself? Are you taking the time you need to be really self-connected in your heart and grounded in your spirit? I encourage you to take the time each day because you are really important. Thanks for being on this journey with me today. Healing you.